Alright guys, welcome back. So now in this session, we're going to be discussing your core drives. And to analyze our core drives, we're going to be looking at the six human needs. So when we talk about core drives, these are the things that drive us to make absolutely every decision in our lives. And by understanding the six human needs, you're going to be able to understand why you make the choices you do, why you behave in certain ways, and what needs are being met by these behaviors, whether they're good or bad behaviors. So the six human needs are things that must be met in order for us to feel fulfilled and happy and like life is good and exciting and full. Okay, so our first four that we're going to discuss form part of our emotional and physical needs. And as human beings, we'll do absolutely anything in order to have these needs met, whether it be destructive behaviors, neutral behaviors, or fulfilling and empowering behaviors to have these needs met, we will do whatever it takes. The last two that we're going to be discussing form part of our spiritual needs. And with this, you'll see that this is all about our enlightenment and awareness and personal growth and development and expansion of self. So let's discuss the first four, our emotional and physical needs. So certainty is the first one. So that's the need to feel like things are good, things are safe, you know what's coming, and having that assurance and surety in your life. And then we also have the need for uncertainty. You know, we need that need of variety. We need to know that there is spice to life. So we want variety. We want some spontaneity. We want some surprises to keep life interesting. Can you imagine if life was plotted out to the last second and you knew absolutely everything that was going to happen all the time? It would be absolutely boring, right? So we need that uncertainty to create variety and the spice of life. The next need that people have is the need for significance. So the need to feel like your presence on earth is important, like you are wanted around and that you are significant to other people around you. And then love and connection. Now, love and connection, although they form part of the same need, they're actually different. So you'll find most people go throughout life building deep connections or plentiful connections, but creating deep, meaningful love is a lot more difficult because it requires risk and big risk. To love somebody unconditionally, to love somebody deeply means to take major risk. If you want to learn more about how to love deeply and to create deep, meaningful relationships, then look out for our relationship course, which will be coming onto Udemy soon. Moving from that, if you look at love and connection and you understand that love takes a lot of risk, in today's society where the environment is so volatile, most people crave certainty above all the other needs. And because people crave a lot of certainty, you'll find that there's a lot of connections being made, but not so much deep, meaningful love and compassion around the world right now. And that just falls into the need for certainty more than uncertainty and love. So understand that. Then moving to our spiritual needs that must be met in order to feel fulfilled and happy. The first one we're going to discuss is personal growth. Now, as we said in our previous lessons, if you're not growing, you're dying. So we all have that need to level up, to expand, to educate, to know more, to learn more, to experience more. That personal growth need is huge in all of us. And I encourage you, the next time you're going through a low state for an extended period of time, lean into this need and ask yourself, when last did I do something that challenged my level of personal growth? And you'll often find that many of us experience a low state when we aren't expanding on our personal growth, when we've stopped learning, when we've stopped trying new things, when we stop growing and we've become stuck in the same old routine, that's where we lose our personal growth. And so you'll find that, that when you connect into that and lean into that, that could be a main cause as to why you're feeling stagnant. And if you actually think about water, if you think of personal growth like water, when the water's moving, it's clean, it's energetic, it's bright, it's full of life. When the water remains stagnant, that's when it gets yucky and dirty and full of disease. And if you think of that, that is exactly how we are emotionally as human beings. Our last human need is the need for contribution. So the need to feel like we are giving service, giving back to the world and that we are helping the people around us and that we are impacting the world in a positive way, leaving a legacy behind. And that is one of the highest needs to be met. And it's if you can focus on contribution as one of your main needs, you'll find that this is where fulfillment lies at exponential rate, that you will never feel more fulfilled than when you are contributing positively to the life of others. So on the next slide, what we're going to be showing you is how 
ordering these needs differently so how you prioritize these needs will affect how you move through life and how you might want to reorder these things so that you live a life that is in more alignment for your future for what you want to be living and how you want to be living so now that you know a little bit more about the six human needs i want to show you how prioritizing these needs differently can create different identities and behaviors in people now, I've given you three examples. Of course, there are endless ways in prioritizing these needs to create different identities and behaviors and core drives. So our first example here is somebody who values significance and certainty above all else. Now, the pros of somebody who has prioritized their needs like this is that they'll be very driven and determined, constantly wanting to learn and progress and challenge themselves to be the best. A con of a person like this is they may experience burnout because they're so desperately trying to find significance and certainty, working themselves to the bone to achieve it, that burnout is a very realistic possibility for these people. On the other side of the cons is you might find that people like this struggle to build deep, meaningful relationships. Number one, because they struggle to look at the bigger picture, so they're constantly internalizing. Someone like this might also find it very easy to slip into the victim mentality. So why does everyone do this to me? How come my life never works out? How can people always treat me this way? And they find it very difficult to step outside of themselves. That's because their need for significance is so high up on their list. As far as certainty goes, people like this will struggle to create deep meaningful relationships because to create a loving relationship, you have to be able to live with uncertainty. Love is a risk. It always will be. And even when you have met your life partner, there will still be risk involved. So uncertainty is a fact of love. It's part of love. And it's what creates interest and passion and friction in love. So someone who values significance and certainty might find it very difficult to let go and fall into that uncertainty and fall into that not needing to control the situation so much. Now, our second example is someone who values certainty and then love and connection the most. Now, the pros of somebody like this is they are do-gooders. They want to do the most they can for people in order to create love and connection. They'll do whatever it takes. And some of the cons for somebody like this, though, is that they could fall into the trap of becoming a people pleaser. Because they value certainty and love and connection so much, they will have a major fear of rejection. So they become people pleasers, trying to control how people perceive them and how people relate to them. And so they'll become very controlling. There'll be a major fear of rejection. And they can also get burnout from being overly people pleasing and not prioritizing themselves enough. And so the other thing about this is somebody like this would handle change very poorly. So because certainty is valued so highly on their list, change would be something that this person struggles with and again remember when it comes to love uncertainty is a part of love so valuing certainty you so you can see there on this person's list uncertainty is number five on their list of priorities which means true love will be very difficult for this person the next one we've got is contribution so contribution and personal growth is this person's highest priority. So our third example, you'll see they prioritize contribution and personal growth. Now, the pros of somebody who values these two needs above all else is that they'll also do good is they'll be driven and they aspire to change the world. They usually have very good leadership skills and they are very selfless and kind. They really prioritize giving back and growing and expanding themselves. Some of the cons of somebody like this is they can also fall into people pleasing tendencies and can also become very burnt out by never filling their cup up and constantly giving and trying to grow and push themselves to give more and more and more of themselves. They could get themselves burnt out because they don't take time to fill their cup because they don't value their significance enough. Another thing that is a con for this sort of person is they lack the self care and self love. So they really don't value themselves and their self-worth that much. They always want to put everybody else before them. And then the biggest fear of this person is that they might fear that they are not making a big enough impact on the world. And this could lead to imposter syndrome tendencies. So they never feel like what they're giving is good enough. And so there are pros and cons to any kind of way that you are prioritizing your list. And that is also a part of life. So what you want to manage is 
Although each way of prioritizing your needs might come with a set of problems, you want to choose which problems you feel are more manageable. So you want to choose the quality of your problems. All right, guys. So now that you know what the six human needs are and how prioritizing the needs differently can affect us so differently and how we experience life differently, I'd like you to take some time to follow through with this exercise. So grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, and let's do some self-reflection. I'd like you to think of the six human needs and write down how you have been prioritizing the six human needs in your life. So do them in a list. So certainty, uncertainty, significance, personal growth, love, connection, contribution, and prioritize them in the way that you believe you've prioritized them in your life up to this point. And then I want you to write some pros and cons of how prioritizing your needs this way might have been affecting your life experience. So what are some of the pros? What are some of the cons of having your needs prioritized in the way that you have been in the past? And then thirdly, I'd like you to write down how you could fulfill your human needs in a more sustainable and effective way. Think of some daily practices that you could add to ensure that you experience these things positively and meet your needs in a way that is healthy and sustainable. And once you've done that, I want you to look at your list again and think about how you could reorder your needs differently for you to be happier or more fulfilled. And if you're not happy with the pros and cons, then just keep shuffling your list around and see how you can fulfill your needs in a way that is better for your life. Enjoy this. This is a beautiful exercise that will really shape your identity and grow yourself personally and expand your self-awareness.